And now for an India Today exclusive, it's an interview that has already set off a massive political controversy. Pranam Mukherjee, India's president, has said that the Beaufort's controversy was not a scandal but a trial by the media. In an interview to a Swedish daily, Mukherjee said that no court has established that Beaufort's gun deal was a scandal and that the so-called scandal was only in the media. Pranam Mukherjee has also said that the entire controversy was a trial by the media. Mukherjee, who was also the defense minister, said that he was told by all the generals that Beaufort's was the best gun they ever had. Now, the Beaufort's camp, which exploded in 1986, is one of the biggest taints on the Congress and cost the then Prime Minister Rajiv Gandhi the general election in 1989. In 86, when the Congress was in power, Swiss arms manufacturer Beaufort's landed a 1500 crore contract to supply guns to India. The Swedish media reported that the company had paid massive kickbacks to Indian politicians and defense officials. Well, first point is no Indian court has given a verdict on it. And though process of trial is going on, and unless somebody, some authoritative institutions describe it as a scandal and punish it, how could you say that it is a scandal? You may have some doubt, you may have some suspicions, but that's not the proof. Let's now go across to senior journalist Chitra Subramaniam, who actually got the Beaufort scandal into public glare. She was the one who broke the story way back in 1986. Chitra, thanks very much for joining us here on India Today. What was your first reaction when you first learnt about this interview by the president? When I first heard the interview, uh, uh, I was taken aback. I thought that there was more to it than what was being heard or said because it was the president of India. He was saying something extremely important. Uh, so my first reaction was disbelief and wondering what was this all about. And then I read the interview and then I saw the interview and I spoke to people in Sweden and then it was a shock. It was a complete shock because it was the president of India speaking and, uh, you know, to, to sort of pretend that something never happened was uh, trying to rewrite history uh, with a certain bias. So that was i thought absolutely shameful now chitra you have also written a letter in the newsminute.com uh, where you say that uh, this was not a media scandal this was uh, actually the biggest scandal that was uh, unfolded uh, now uh, how did you if you could just tell our viewers how did you actually get hold of this particular story how did you actually know that something like this has happened how could i get the lead in i have no idea i just think i was i'm a very stubborn person and if I think that I'm on the right track, I will stay there till something proves me wrong. So um, when the Beaufort story broke, uh, we were about 300 journalists at that time in Stockholm. And um, I just went around knocking on all the doors uh, where I thought the information could be available. And slowly, I mean, don't forget, it took me one year to get to Mr. Stan Lindstrom, who finally gave me the documents. Nothing happened overnight. So um, how I got the documents, I think you need a bit of luck, you need a bit of perseverance, and you also need a bit of belief in your own systems. So finally, I came down to telling people that if they were not helping me, they were helping the corrupt. So it came down to two or three people who had to make a decision on handing over the papers. Well, uh, this write-up of yours that we were referring to, uh, the headline actually says, You are right, Mr. President. Beaufort's was not a scandal. It was a mega scandal. Uh, now, Chitra, what are the things which led to the Beaufort scam? If you could just tell us a little about it. Well, the documents did not mention Rajiv Gandhi. The diary is mentioned. Martin Adbo's diary is mentioned that um, uh, if you mention the name of... Uh, uh, Arun Nehru, then we have to keep, uh, we have to worry about his friend Rajiv Gandhi. I mean, there were not lines and lines on Rajiv Gandhi. That is not what the story was. The story was that a company had come in in the end, towards the end of the deal, called AE Services, which whipped off the top of a deal for a cool uh, 7 to 10 million um, um, dollars. And that money was paid. It was a political payoff. So, and that was paid to Ottavio Quattrocchi, who was a friend of Rajiv Gandhi. So, um, if you're looking for Rajiv Gandhi in the documents, it doesn't exist. And of course, it doesn't exist in what we know. 
uh, you must bear in mind that two two bagfuls of documents went to uh, went to India from Switzerland, and no one knows what was in those documents. So they may have even disappeared. So uh, to answer your question, no, I didn't see anything with Rajiv Gandhi's name on it except stray references in the um, in the in the notes. But yes, he mounted a spectacular cover-up. So the cover-up was there. Now, interesting, Chitra, that you mentioned the name of Quatrochi. His name is often associated with Beaufort. If you could just reiterate what really was his role. And I'll tell you why all this has become important, because you have none other than the president of this country actually going uh, to, uh, you know, speaking to the Swedish media and saying that this was a media trial. So uh, I think it will be important on your part to perhaps establish the key roles that were played by various people. What was the role played by Quatrochi? Well, he was brought in because he was Rajiv Gandhi's uh, friend. Why would Beaufort pay somebody who just has no use? I mean, uh, he was brought in because he was Rajiv Gandhi's friend. Money of the AE services was paid to him. And uh, that's what it was. And when they got caught, he fled the country and stayed in Malaysia. And then, of course, went on for, to do further things. Similarly, the CEO of Bofors, Martin Adbo, was never, never allowed to come to India or was never questioned in India. So the fact remains that when the president says that there was no Indian evidence, um, there could not be any Indian evidence because nothing was tried in India or nothing was allowed to be tried in India. So, you know. Now, Chitra, it's been nearly uh, three decades, 30 years down the line uh, of the scam actually being unearthed. It's, it's seen as uh, one of the biggest scams, something that cost the, you know, the government of that present day, uh, or government of that time, you know. Uh, how do you see this case coming along now? Well, I mean, I think it's, on, on the one hand, it's rather hilarious. On the other hand, it's serious. It's hilarious because... I mean, this is a very seasoned politician. Pranab Mukherjee is not a rookie. And he's going off on his first important trip to Sweden. He'll be meeting the king and other high, high officials. Um, so to have said it like this, I find it very strange. Uh, but the other more serious thing is that what he doesn't seem to understand or others don't seem to understand is that it included also Swedish journalists and the Swedish, uh, the Swedish police, the Swedish... Uh, National Audit Bureau, the Swiss police, the Swiss Foreign Office, the Swiss Justice Ministry, all these people were involved in helping India. So by saying that nothing happened, he's actually saying that all these people were wasting their time. That, I think, is a bigger damage coming at a time when India is looking abroad for investments. Now, Chitra, my final question to you before we let you go. Do you still stand by your story? In the beginning, I didn't feel any hindrance because uh, I think they were also quite cocky. They felt that they will not get found out. But once the documents started to coming out, started coming out, and once it became quite uh, obvious that this was going to be a long haul, I mean, there were, you know, there were threats. I mean, every there were bureaucrats who were pulled up. There were uh, the judiciary, the executive, everything, everything had to. There was a joint parliamentary committee set up just to do a nonsensical job. Um, there were threats, uh, you know, I had to face some, my family had to face others. Um, so Rajiv Gandhi's presence in covering up was very, very strong. Um, he went out to cover up. So the question that you need to ask is why did he cover up if he was not involved? If I stand accused of something um, which threatens my job and I've not done it, then the best thing I would do is to say, no, let's go and find out the truth which is not what he did, and paid a price for it. Okay. Chitra Subramaniam, many thanks for joining us at this moment. Of course, uh, President Pranam Mukherjee making that statement that Bofors was nothing but a media trial in his capacity as the president is something which is being questioned at this moment. We were, uh, in fact, speaking to the lady who actually got this scam in the public light here in India. Chitra Subramaniam on India Today.